Oh, no. Oh, no. What is that? Hey, yo, Antonio. A couple weeks ago, I went to New Zealand to do something that I've been wanting to do for a very long time, having my eyelids squeezed. You might be wondering, why in the world would I want to do that? Well, if you know a little bit about how our eyes stay lubricated, you'll know that the liquid that covers our eyeballs is made up of three layers. Mucin, water, and oil. The oil part is particularly important because it serves as a barrier to stop the tears from evaporating. If you do not have a good enough oil layer, then the tears will dry out too quickly, leading to dry eyes. The most common cause of this is what is known as meibomian gland dysfunction, where the meibomian glands get blocked up and the oil cannot escape the gland. The eye clinic at the University of Auckland, which is where I did my optometry training, has been running a dry eye clinic to treat such conditions, and they were kind enough to let me go in as a patient and document the process. I was told that dry eye treatment is a part of the university curriculum now, so I was excited to check out what the procedures involved. First, I was seated at the patient chair, and Gemma, who was a final year optometry student, placed what looks like a VR headset, known as blepharsteam, over my eyes for about 10 minutes. This contraption releases steam over my eyes and heats them up to about 40 degrees Celsius, the perfect temperature for breaking apart the blockage, and it'll make it easier to unblock the glands later. A similar process can be done at home without this contraption, which is something that I covered in a separate video in case you were curious. After sitting around for about 10 minutes, I was ready to have my eyelids squeezed. But first, Gemma had to anaesthetize my eyelids. As you can imagine, having the eyelids squeezed is not going to be a painless experience, so having them numbed is going to be a good idea. What you are seeing now is the footage from the slit lamp camera. The tricky thing with recording slit lamp footage on this day was that the focal point of the camera and what Gemma sees through the slit lamp eyepiece was out of sync, so we might encounter some blurriness along the way. We tried squeezing the eyelids a few times and perhaps my meibomian glands were not as blocked up as I was expecting, but shortly after, this happened. That was the most disgusting yet satisfying thing I've ever seen. And I want to give a huge shout out to the guys at Auckland University for making it all possible. If you were interested in having something similar done yourself, then I would recommend looking up IPL treatment in your local area or checking out my other video on hot compresses for more information. But a question that I get asked all the time is, what causes the blockage in the first place? For us to understand meibomian gland dysfunction, we must know that the quality of oil inside the glands plays a crucial role. The quality can be influenced by endogenous or exogenous factors. Endogenous factors include things like our age, diet, and certain medications. I've covered this topic of diet in many other videos, but I'll cover it again for those that haven't seen it. The quality of oil our eyes produce can largely be affected by the ratio of essential fatty acids, commonly known as omega-3s and omega-6s. Simply put, it's important to maintain a good balance between the two, but much of our modern diet is heavily concentrated in 6s, which has been known to decrease the quality of mabum. Oils that we use for cooking, such as sunflower, canola, and olive oil, all contain a heavy concentration of omega-6, whereas the less commonly found oils, such as fish oil or flaxseed oil, contain a high level of omega-3. Omega-3 supplementation has also been known to increase the quality of our bodily oils, 
and I would recommend checking out this video for a bit of context. Exogenous factors on the other hand include things that irritate the eyes, such as dusty environments, not enough blinking when at the computer, and eye rubbing. Try to avoid things like dust, sand, pollen, and smoke from getting into the eyes, and make sure to blink more frequently when at the computer. Anything that irritates the surface will trigger an inflammatory response from the eyelids, therefore leading to a decrease in mebum quality. If we can get the eyes to produce high quality oil, then the eyes will stay well lubricated, and as a result, be less irritated and continue to produce high quality oil. If on the other hand, the eyes are not able to produce high quality oil, then the eyes will dry out and the eyelids will swell up and start a self-reinforcing cycle of bad oil production. But that just about wraps up today's video on meibomian gland dysfunction and meibomian gland expression. If you have any questions or suggestions about this topic, then feel free to comment down below. And as always, if you've learned something new, or at least found something useful, then yay, thumbs up to you. If you want to thumbs up back, then they'll be greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.